everyone! As I was setting up for this video, and to begin painting, I moved my cat's perch, and Ian promptly jumped up into it and proceeded to hang out there while I was painting. Here's the other one, here's Oliver, and there are the two troublemakers of my house. Yes, indeed, there they are. Nefarious to the end. Alright, so moving on, I just want to show you quickly to my two cats. I love them very much. They are an awesome part of my little family. My wife and I enjoy having them. Let's move on though, and I wanted to do something slightly different from my, this channel. Um, normally I do time-lapse videos of all my paintings, but um, another artist that I greatly respect, Dave Usher, he is a fantastic artist who works out of England. He is a watercolorist as well as an acrylic painter who does these fantastic impressionist style quasi-abstract landscapes. He also does, does some very beautiful landscapes in a watercolor style and so he suggested I might do some painting videos where I had more commentary just to help people out a little bit more rather than just always doing time lapse kind of mix it up so I thought that was a fantastic suggestion thank you so much Dave for for mentioning that actually it was in one of his videos he had mentioned that he didn't care for time lapse videos and I got me to thinking about the topic and uh, I think he's maybe he's right maybe he's onto something maybe people want to see more commentary so I'm gonna do a little bit of both I'm not gonna give up the time lapse people do like watching those so I'll keep those, but I'm also going to do a little bit of commentary. To start out today, we're going to add some water right onto the canvas. As you can see, I have a red vermilion gesso on the canvas already. I like to prime all my canvases with it, or most of them, not all of them. This is going to be an acrylic abstract painting that I'm going to do for you here today. And my color palette is alizarin crimson, cobalt blue, yellow ochre, titanium white, and Mars black. Starting with the Mars black, um, almost pure out of the tube, not quite, touch of the titanium white. I'm going to start covering the canvas. I'm using like a, I think it's like a one and a half inch brush, yeah. And just going to cover this 9 by 12 inch canvas, the upper portions at least, with this dark, a bit more of the white here to make it more of a gray. And I'm just doing a crisscross pattern with the brush, sort of grinding it right into the canvas and I'm doing this because I want it to be a rather thin layer because I'm going to layer several layers on top of it so I don't want it to be too thick yet. We'll get there but not yet. We want it to just be a background neutral color layer that we can just keep adding paint onto uh, and adjust it as we want to as we go along. This is acrylics so they dry fairly quickly so that, that's a nice thing about working with these acrylics is they dry so fast you can just wait for a layer to dry and go right over the top of it and it works pretty well. Adding a bit more of the Mars black in the corner there. Now I'm sort of doing a swishing left to right motion with my brush. And again I'm just trying to lots of different brush marks, different textures going all over the place trying to keep it moving. That's the main thing. Keep your brush moving. I want it to be very fluid and energetic looking so I'm trying to use my brush to blend it together nicely but at the same time keep everything moving along at a brisk pace one of the challenges I set for myself when I was starting this painting was I said I'm going to record for only an hour whatever I get to in an hour that's where the painting stops so that's what I did I did one hour of painting and I figured I could cut it down to about a half an hour which I was able to um, by editing out all the pauses and the brush reloads and things like that and the reason why I did this is because I wanted to show you this painting at normal speed. I wanted to be able to do the commentary over a normal speed level of painting. We can see every single brush stroke as I add it onto the canvas, and that was important to me. I'm not speeding this up in a time-lapse way at all. This is my normal speed of painting here, and, and so that was important for me, and something I wanted to challenge myself was to cut my painting time down, and a great way of doing that is to limit the amount of time I spent uh, painting overall. Okay, so I've created here a sort of gray, basic mid-tone gray across the whole thing. And um, I've lost a little bit of the dark areas in a few spots. I should have more dark across, but I wanted a nice, even, blended look to it. I should note, while I'm thinking about it, that um, there is a little bit of a glare on the canvas from where my light source is. Um, I apologize for that. My last video I had the light source in the wrong spot and I was blocking it so in an effort to 
you know, make sure I did not block my light source, I ended up adding a little bit of a glare to the canvas. For where I was standing when I was painting, there was no glare at all. It was perfect. But because of where I had to position the camera so that I wasn't blocking the camera, it ended up the light would hit the canvas and go right into the camera. It's a mess. So, um, I'm still working out where I'm going to put my light, how we're going to do this every single time. Um, but for right now, you can still see fairly well. It's not too much of a glare yet, so we'll have to just work with around that. Uh, I'm still working through it, and you know, it's a learning process. This is, I'm, I am new to making videos. This is not something I've been doing for years and years. It's only been months and months. So as I figure each time I make a mistake, I make an adjustment, and eventually I will figure it out. But for right now, it's what we have. is what we're going to work with. Okay, I have switched over to my palette knife here and I am applying an alizarin slash black mixture. I, the alizarin crimson can be sort of a dominant color and I know this so I wanted to slow it down a little bit by adding a touch of the black to mute it overall so it wasn't so vibrant on the canvas. It's still pretty vibrant, I have to admit. That is a bright, vibrant color but it is a, a very beautiful color and I'm, I'm really enjoying working with it. I went to the store the other day and they were having a great sale where I was able to get buy a tube, I think the other one was 50% off, something like that. And so I bought a couple of new tubes of acrylic paint and one of them was a lizard and crimson. Woohoo! So I wanted to do a painting using that these new colors. The lizard and crimson and the cobalt blue um, were among those that I purchased. I purchased like four or five new tubes of it. So I like to do my abstracts using a lot of the palette knife because it helps me distance myself a little bit from the canvas. I can't control what happens as well with a palette knife. You just can't. I mean, some people maybe can, and the masters of it can. I added a bit of the white followed by some of the black there um, to slow it down. But I just, for me, it's going to kind of do what it's going to do. I just put the paint on there, I move it around, and what happens sort of happens. And then I have to make adjustments from there. Like, for instance, right there, the white was too bright there, so I added a little bit of the black over top of it. Occasionally, if I really don't like it, I can bring the brush in, like here, with a little bit of that gray, the light gray. It's just a white with a touch of the black added to create that. And I'm going to kind of brush over and slow down a little bit of that knife work here. And that's sort of the process of painting for me, particularly abstracts like this, or abstracted cityscapes, as this will actually turn into. Um, you just try things, and then if it doesn't work, you just make an adjustment and make another adjustment. I'm sort of putting it on the canvas and then reacting to it. A constant process of being creative and putting new colors, new paint on the uh, piece in front of me, and then analyzing and observing how it's working and making the changes in real time. So that's sort of my philosophy to painting, it's my philosophy for a lot of things actually, probably even life. And um, that's just how I roll, it's what I do, as they say. Smoothing everything out again, now I have a nice little purple cast to the bottom where that alizarin crimson is slowly snuck into the gray, which is so pretty. And I'm going to uh, do a few minute, little bit of touches here and there, a little bit more of the dark. As I said, I've kind of lost some of that dark, so I'm going to add a little bit more of the gray and um, added a little bit of black to it to make it a slightly darker and put that on the canvas. Alright, back to the alizarin crimson. Uh, you'll notice that this time I added a touch more of the dark black, the Mars black, and it's a slightly darker. And I'm going to start adding in this little pocket of clouds. Now notice my technique here. I put it on the canvas, I scrape 50% of it off, and then I put it right back on the canvas. So I'm sort of mixing and shaping it so until I get some unique and interesting looking shapes. I want some of those knife mark lines in there. I want it to be somewhat broken looking. I have found that it is easy to get into a rhythm of this is a square block, this is a square block, this is a square block, unless that's the overall effect. For instance, my evening garden painting is like that, where I have lots of blocks, little square blocks of paint, and that's the effect I was going for. But here, I don't want that necessarily. I'm going to add a few horizontal strokes of the lizard and crimson to simulate the look of the reflection of the cloud color 
in the water. Thematically speaking, I find that for many of my abstracts, I use themes from one into the next. For instance, in my last abstract that you saw in my video about how to handle the edges of your canvas, my three ideas contained within about what to do when you, with the sides of your paintings, I showed you my latest new abstract called Spires. And in that painting, I had a lot of little tiny knife marks going straight up vertically, like you can see I'm putting in here, to create these beautiful little spires in. It could be a marsh, it could be a cityscape on an ocean. It's interpretively vague, and I like it to be like that, of course, because it is an abstract, and I don't want it to be too literal. It has to do with my feeling and my mood of the time when I was painting and uh, other considerations. But here, I want to create sort of a could be a long wall or line of buildings. My idea was buildings, but after looking at it, it could be a wall, actually. It could be, maybe it's like um, a giant fortress with a outward battlements here and the ramparts above. Interpretively, you can see it as a, a line of trees, mostly dead, sticking straight up. It's up to you how you like to interpret what these marks mean, but they are related to those spires that I created in my last painting. So I am using here a very dark gray, again, mostly black, and I am just putting them in here. I think the ones, if I remember right, the ones on the far left are pretty much pure black. And the ones that got to the right, I added a little bit more blue to give a slight pop of color. Very subtle, very subtle, but it is there. I create each of these by first taking the paint I want. I'll use the knife to mix it together on the palette. I will pull out a long line of paint, just scrape a flat line of paint, and then taking my knife and going horizontal against the way I've scraped the paint out, I will wiggle my knife very gently across that line of paint and load the tip of my brush, and then I will just simply press it firmly into the canvas to create those very distinct sharp edge lines that I have created in front of you here. Now, as I was doing this, it dawned on me, you know what, I want to extend that gray sky behind these buildings or trees or these vertical lines, we'll call them, because that's what they are, because I don't want that red to be showing up so strongly. So I decided to bring in a bit more of the gray color with my brush and sort of fill in some of those gaps a little bit more before continuing on with the vertical lines. Now, much of this painting video, I will let you know, is putting in those lines because they are painstakingly slow to put in. But the end result is so cool looking that I thought it's worth the effort and the time spent putting these in. And I'm making sure to kind of follow that disappearing line as it kind of goes to a vanish point somewhere in the distance back way back there. And you can already see with the gray what I'm thinking for that wall and how it's going to get taller and taller as it goes higher and higher into the sky. Okay, using the brush, I'm going to bring out and help define and kind of diffuse the light of those further ramparts or whatever you want to call them. Um, the distant lines, I mean, I'm just going to smooth them out. Then I'm going to go back over them and add some more detail lines, of course, on top of them. Doing pretty good. We are about a ah, third into this painting and the canvas is covered. The underpainting is more or less there, and it's now time to go back in and add the details. Now, I did mention, and I'm going to mention it again here, that this is part one of two. Actually, I haven't even filmed or begun painting part two yet as the recording of this video and this voiceover that I'm doing for you right now. Um, actually, a lot of my videos, what if I do voiceovers like this, I will do the painting not talking because I'm just not skilled enough to do that yet. 
and I have to focus entirely on the painting. And then I will go back over later and add the commentary, that track that you're hearing now. So I'm getting to watch this with you as you are watching it and commentating on what I'm doing. Okay, still using those dark lines. Again, um, if I run out of paint on the very tip of the knife, I can sort of turn it to an angle and coax a little bit more of the paint off the side of the knife edge. But you have to be careful because it will leave bigger and bigger blobs the further to the side you go. So the wider the line becomes, the more to the side your knife will turn and it'll get a wider line. So you have to kind of balance sharp edges with getting the paint on the canvas and so it's a tricky balancing act back and forth. This technique is something that anyone could do certainly but it takes a bit of patience to do and I would not necessarily recommend it for beginner painters. Okay let's do something fun. Yes! Yellow ochre! Here it comes. I'm gonna add a sort of a sunset effect um, just to add some vibrancy to this very dull and kind of bland looking painting up to this point but you start adding in that yellow and everything starts to pop and by the end of this painting it's it's still in the muted kind of subdued area for paintings as paintings go but overall it's not quite so bland looking um, also that glare is ruining a little bit of the effect um, it's actually a richer color and the glare is sort of washing out everything it's not really that washed out it's actually the glare. Um, the gray is a little bit darker looking than you would expect it to be based on what you're seeing here. Adding in some more of a gray or dark gray mixture, sort of defining that outer edge. And I thought that's a really cool idea. We should have the, the shadow sort of reflecting um, down from the buildings. Now I don't know if that's realistic or not. It may not be. Maybe the shadows wouldn't be the way I'm painting them. Uh, maybe especially with the sun right there. But it is an abstract painting. So light, the way light normally works, it's, it's a fantasy abstract. It's a cityscape. Futuristic. It doesn't matter. It's what looks visually striking and interesting. That's what I care about. Um, now, if you, I can do realistic paintings following normal lighting rules. I know how to do that, but for here, I was letting my imagination roam free, and what I wanted to create was these awesome large shadows falling across as the light was striking the front of the buildings, which makes no sense now that I think about it from a lighting perspective, but was very compelling and interesting to me at the time. That's why I said as an artistic person. I'm taking my artistic license and just doing it anyways. Now I should note that I added some light gray swatches or spa, I don't know what to call them, swooshes maybe? <laughs> Across the middle of the water there in the center. And I'm going to go back and add some yellow patches above. Ooh, those are too vibrant. That's okay. So again, it's a process of putting stuff on the canvas and then going back and making changes. And as you can see, as I've gone a little bit extreme with the paint um, here, with that yellow, I mean, I'm going to add a bit more of the Lizard and Crimson and the Mars Black mixture uh, to it to, add, to slow down and dull the sharpness of the yellow ochre. And this is where things get a little bit crazy, as I decide to take that cloud layer from the left hand side all the way and kind of start extending it out over the top of what's going to be the buildings or um, trees or what have you. Now I'm thinking for part two um, and you already this is already a good sense of what the painting looks like. Um, of course I put a lot more detail on the front of those buildings, but you get a good sense of the composition as it stands. And I think what's lacking in this piece is the right hand wall is sending you to the back of the canvas. And you get back there and there's that sunset which is vibrant and striking, but I feel like it needs something else. There's, it's a little bit 
static. Um, I'm not sure why there's movement across. Um, I think it's kind of sending you from right to left. Hit the sunrise and come back down. So there's sort of a, a bouncing effect happening as you look at it. Adding a bit of the blue and the black here. Again, just adding those lines in as straight as I can. Not perfect. I'm not worrying too much if they're not perfectly straight. I'm just trying to get them on the canvas, and we can worry about that later. And so I think what I'm going to do, maybe, is add a little a couple spires in the far distance, right in front of the sunset. Maybe define the horizon line a bit more distinctly, and I hope that that will sort of bring the whole painting together overall. I think I might add some uh, a cool shadow below the building, so the building will kind of cut on the far left, right in front of the light, and then there'll be a shadow kind of cast downwards towards the viewer, and that might be kind of cool. I may also bring some more orange into this. It's the purple, putting in some light, mellowy orange color. Would that be kind of cool? I don't know. Think about it. A couple of good different ideas. We'll see what mood I'm in and what strikes me when I get to painting and recording part two. For now, let's focus on part one. So coming back to form and to shape here, we are going to see that I added some more of the almost pure Mars black to the bottom of, for those building shadows, or what I'm going to call building shadows, and then I'm going to keep adding in some more lines. That wall is starting to sh take shape very slowly. Doing good, making good progress here. Now, at the very last probably like five or six minutes of recording, I moved my canvas and it created an even worse glare, unfortunately on the canvas so you can't see it quite as well so what I did is I kind of cut forward a couple times um, I wanted to show you every single stroke that was my goal but because of the lighting issue that I had I needed to really trim down so you didn't have this glaring painting in front of you so what I did is I shortened uh, a few things but mostly what I cut out if I cut out anything at all was a few more of these strokes that are just vertical lines and I've been showing you these for the last seven minutes now or so so you know how to do them the technique is the same I'm just continuing that technique and building layers of these lines and that's all I'm doing so if I cut anything out that you wanted to see I'm sorry about that but uh, it's all there really it is it's just a few moments I need to shorten because the glare gets changed a little bit and with that wet paint in the sky, you can start to see the glare is a little bit more pronounced here. Um, the actual sky is pretty cool looking, so I'm a little bit sad that you can't see it you know, fully. But, oh well, that's painting, you know, that's just part of how it goes. I'm starting to add a little bit of that purple cloud color into these buildings. And as I'm coming forward, I'm sort of scraping out and making the building lines a little bit thicker. And I start to do this actually across most of these building lines but particularly at the bottom here I want a nice thick line of paint starting to take shape yeah that wall Whew. so cool looking it's a nice little piece I'm, I'm enjoying this one this was a fun one to paint I have to say really had a fantastic time working through and painting this painting it was a lot of, a lot of fun it was very freeing. I didn't really think about it too much. Usually I kind of plan these out a bit more than here. Here I was just like, eh, that'll work. And so forth. And it was a lot of fun. It was kind of freeing. I'll have to do that more. Maybe just kind of let go and see what happens a little bit more. I'm not a huge planner, I'll admit. My wife will attest. I'm not a planner type at all. But when it comes to painting, I usually have a very strong idea of what I'm going to do before I start painting. And for this, I have to be honest, I didn't spend quite as much time forming that idea. I just said, let's paint and let's see what happens. And it was a, it was a fun experience. I really recommend that sometimes. Just get your paint out and do something. You never know what will result. And you know, sometimes it could be your best work. You never know. Uh, I'm not saying this is my best work. It may not. It probably isn't. Um, but uh, you never know. And that's, that's the key. You just don't know what's going to happen. And if it doesn't work out, you let it dry prime it again or paint right over. I do that all the time. I can't tell you how much I like to do that where I just said this section doesn't work. 
okay, let's start again. Let's do something else. Let's change the color, what have you. And uh, that works pretty well for me. It really does. Uh, it's a great way to live. Just try again. Try, try again, as the adage goes. At first, you don't succeed, my mother used to tell me. Try, try again. And she was right. Thanks, Mom. Appreciate it. Okay, some more of the almost pure cobalt blue. As you can see, it's on that knife there. I really want to bring that blue forward and bring that more part and present of this composition. So that blue is going to really hold down that right-hand side for me and help it to sort of fall back a little bit into a less prominent position. As I think about it here now, I wonder if I just need some lighter yellows to kind of go over top of that um, yellow ochre. And if I brought in like a lighter version of the yellow ochre, I think a creamier version looking, it might make the sky slightly more dynamic and slightly lighter. Maybe that would be a good idea. I don't know. I really don't. Just kind of think about that more as we go along. Okay. Where the fun starts adding in the yellow ochre to the, the buildings and starting to define the edges of some of these buildings um, or trees or wall or what have you um, again this is an abstract so I'm not trying to be super realistic with this it's supposed to just be the, the suggestion or the feeling of what's happening here uh, if it's to you it looks like a bunch of lines then I'm adding light to the bunch of lines I mean that's fine, a way to look at it. It can be literal, and I'm happy with that. If it, if it, if my painting, any of my paintings, just brings you a little bit of joy and makes your day a little bit better and helps you feel creative or inspired to try something new and outside your comfort zone a little bit, then I've succeeded in what I wanted to do, and I feel great that I was able to help you and to um, make your day a little bit better. And that means that's my ultimate goal with all of these videos is to inspire other people to be creative and to have fun and to kind of explore themselves through art and artistic activities and creative things like that. So um, I'm so happy if this at all inspires you to do something and try something new. That is the best feeling in the world for me as an artist to know that I've made your day a little bit better. So thank you for letting me do that and for watching these videos and um, hopefully inspiring you a little bit. If it's not this painting doesn't inspire you, that's okay. Maybe the next one will. Uh, or maybe one of my other ones really does speak to you, and I'm, I'm really happy when that happens because it means that um, I'm making the world a little bit better, and that's an important thing. We all can just pitch in a little bit, make the world a little bit better. I'm getting kind of philosophical, aren't I? Um, then I think that's the, that's the best thing we can do. Okay, I'm going to draw kind of a line here and um, sort of define that bottom edge of those vertical lines. The way I'm actually thinking about it is maybe those yellow ochre is maybe the lights within inside the buildings and they're reflecting outward. Um, you know what I'm saying? These skyscrapers here, they're reflecting outward and the light's hitting the water, maybe. Or it could be the light is hitting the buildings and then bouncing off and then hitting the water. I don't know. I have no idea. I am just speculating on my own abstract and that's how it goes sometimes. Uh, oh, wow, look at that blue. Woo! So pretty. There's that blue coming out um, in the wall. And that makes sense if it's up above. Um, I always suggest re with reflections, just copy. Whatever you do above, meaning in the air, just reflect it exactly in the water and it will look pretty good. And that's what I'm trying to do here. I imperfectly, admittedly, but I am trying to sort of just mirror what's on happening in the vertical lines going upward is going to be happening in the water. Or as exactly or as close to exact as I can get it.
the last few touches on this painting, and I think we're getting very close to the end here. And so I hope that you have enjoyed watching me paint and work on this painting. I've had a blast commentating this video for you, and I'm glad and happy if you liked it. I'm going to add a few last little bit of gray here. There's some more gray, the lighter gray. I'm going to put it into the buildings a little bit to give them a slightly more building-ish look, or maybe they could be trees or whatever you want, a wall maybe. And then I'm going to add the gray along the, the line, dis the disappearing line I have there, heading across the canvas here. And then I'm going to lay in some colors over top of that, sort of as almost like a walkway. The light's going to shimmer off of it. A little jump there, jump forward just a few seconds. Um, I think I jiggled the camera is what happened. Alright, and here, here's the colors on the walkway. Blue first. Some yellow ochre. Cobalt blue, then the yellow ochre. I'm going to take some of that yellow ochre and extend it out. It's a little bit bright, so let's add some of the gray, a little bit of the black, I mean. And then now a little bit of the gray in the center there. So I think we're just about done here. Be sure to check out my blog at impulsiveartistry.blogspot.com. You also can purchase my paintings on Etsy at my Etsy shop. And there will be a link in the description below for both of those. Other than that, have a fantastic day, and thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to comment if you think I should do a little bit more to this painting in part two or not. Thanks!